Hey everybody, it's Stuart with Wine All The Time. So today I'm going to review something that I've been looking for for a very long time. I finally found an Australian Riesling under $15. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine All The Time and today I'm reviewing a Riesling from Southern Australia. You heard that correctly. This is the... <laughs> I always screw this up. I try to miss it, mix up the names. This is the Chateau Tanundra, not the Grand Tanundra. Chateau Tanunda Grand Barossa Riesling. It's from Southern Australia in the Barossa area. It is 11.5% alcohol by volume. I love Australian Rieslings. Now here's the deal. It's not from Clare or Eden Valley, which are probably my top two areas for Riesling, like in the whole world. I just love those bone dry Rieslings. They just have so much nice, qual like so many nice qualities to them. Um, and then after that, I would probably say, I'll say in, in Washington, like those areas are probably on par with each other for second place. Like it just depends on if I want something off dry or a little bit more dry and mineral, like in a little bit more mineral, it, it just depends. But regardless, if someone offers me a Riesling from Clare or Eden Valley, I am not going to turn it down ever. So Barossa is within the same area and uh, I'm hoping that this is good. My wife already got to my bottle a little bit. Um, she's not a fan of Riesling. And so she made it very clear she was not a fan of this one. So either that means that one, the wine was really well made and it's a great representation of Riesling and I'm going to really enjoy it. Um, or two, it's just a crappy wine. I don't know. Um, but let's take a look at it. So screw top plus one. And looking at it from a color standpoint, I'm going to give you a medium to, oh, wow. Okay, first, before I even finish that, doing this, I can already start to tell you what aromas are in there. This is a major, majorly aromatic wine. Woo. -hoo. And I, <laughs> I need to focus on the color because if I don't focus on the color, I'm never gonna get through this review. Um, this is a, this is a deep yellow wine. To be more specific, this is a urine on antibiotics yellow wine. That's, 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 I mean like when, when you're sick and you're taking a whole bunch of antibiotics, this is your color right here. It's almost neon in a way. It's, it's not neon green, it's neon yellow, but it's, man, this is, <laughs> this is, this wine already has character and, well, I barely smelled it because I went like this and I can already tell you at least three of the aromas in it. This is a highly aromatic grape. So from a nose standpoint, I'm getting, look. So this has more of a vinyl smell than Ariana Grande's closet. Let's just go there. Like this is this this is a this is a, a strip club on college night level vinyl. This is this is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, like normally people say, oh, there's a little bit of petroleum or plastic. No, this is this is grandma's couch in a glass. This is this is so much. There's also like a hint of green apple, a little bit of lemon and lime, maybe a touch of peach. There's also a big banana note to it. And uh, what is that? It's like a melon. Let me try to figure out what kind of melon. Uh, I'm having a hard time figuring out the melon, but the fact, I mean, this is a pronounced nose. From here, I can pick up two thirds of and this is like what is it won't like hold on one two like one two three like three inches away from the rim of the glass if i stick my nose into that i'm damn near suffocated by a plastic bag so 
Let's get to the taste. One, bone dry. Bone dry, I love it. Two, high acid. No, three, the, the, the plasticky vinyl type thing didn't hit me right up front. It didn't come into the mid palate. I got a lot of really bright acidic fruits. I got lemon, lime, a little bit of green apple. Um, I didn't really get anything else. All those other things I was smelling in here, like the melon, maybe if I take a sip. No, but the banana hits on the mid palate. The banana does, I was just kind of in shock from the plastic. Once I, once I had another sip and it kind of evened out my palate a little bit, I could pick up the banana. Uh, one more try for the melon. Nah, I'm not picking up the melon. Um, I smell it. I can't taste it. Um, yeah, but I mean, this is this is really interesting because I've, I've had. Okay, so let's do this. Let, let me just go straight to the rating. I'm all over the place. I'm exhausted. And this is a wine that's excited me for a while because I've been trying to find one at this price range. So let me just go to this. From a rating standpoint, you're okay. Yeah, all the hype. I know, I know you're disappointed. But but listen, here's why. Balance, ah, you're not balanced. There's, you have a great acidity. You, you, you're... But, but you're, you're just so heavy handed on that petroleum note. The, the, the wines that I've had from Claire and Eden are very balanced. You get a little bit of everything. From here, I'm getting a spike of citrus and just boom. Just like licking the toy store packaging. It's, it's, it's not working for me here. So, so, so that's, that's cross number one. Length. Medium minus finish. You don't really have much length. I, I don't like even giving half a point until you hit medium. So you're not going to get anything there. Intensity. You have intensity. I give you that. I'm getting a lot, like all of your specific fruit elements, the the kind of vinyl slash plastic note that I typically associate with Rieslings, the acid. Everything is intense. Like this is an intense wine. So you get that. Complexity. <sighs> Everything is. After a few sips, everything is kind of masked by the vinyl. Like, like you, you can't, like you have to really learn how to appreciate the fruit on the first and maybe second and possibly third taste. Anything after that, you're just not gonna get it. Um, am, I, am I disappointed with this wine? A little bit, a little bit. I, I, I would hope that, um, I, I would have gotten a little bit more out of it. But at my price point, I can't complain too much because not only did I find out for 15 bucks, I found out really cheap. So there is that. Now, if someone said, hey, instead of this price point, we're gonna give you a Claire or Eden Valley Riesling for $5 more, hell yeah. I, I would take it hands down. I would, I would take it hands down. I think there's just a little bit more finesse and those wines, based upon everything that I've tried in my tastings and I found on my own, they just they just tend to be a little bit more nuanced than a generic Barossa Riesling. However, if you can't find a Clare Eden Valley and you really want a dry, you want to kind of step stone your way into a dry Australian Riesling, for, for the price, it's not a bad, a not a bad way to explore it. It's a very tropical wine and um, you could do worse. You could. I have had worse. Trust me. So, so like I said, I'm going to give you an okay, but there's there's still a ways to go. On another note, um, Australian Rieslings, in general, high acid Rieslings age well. So, if you don't quite like the characters, maybe the plastic vinyl will kind of mellow out a little bit and you'll get more honey kind of notes, more tropical melon, actually sweet melon type notes. Give it some time. This is a 2010 and um, this this can probably age a lot longer, like another five years. So if you want, um, 
in 2024, stop by and let me know if you've had this wine and what you think of it. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Chateau Tananda Grand Barossa? I, yes, I got a first try. <laughs> Riesling from Southern Australia. I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime.